Hi, people. Um, hope you're all well. Now, uh, for any women watching this, I would simply ask you to hear me out. You don't have to agree, but um, I don't want to be misunderstood, so please do hear me out. Um, with subjects like this, you know, I, um, I prefer not to engage in the battle of the sexes as much as possible. I just think that men and women are better working together as people perhaps a bit idealistic, but um, I try to avoid the battle of the sexes. I just think it can it can lead to a situation where there's just no winners. It just gets into this back and forth defensiveness and um, and so on. It just becomes very difficult. But um, there is something that I've noticed, and I do think it needs to be raised. It needs to be brought up. Um, and that is that in the Western world, I think that there's a ca casual anti-male sexism that uh, really, really does get free pass. Now, by free pass, what I mean is that men can be spoken about in such a way uh, under the guise of journalism, particularly, um, and I'm going to give a case example of this, um, in a way that a male writer, a male journalist, could not write about women without facing serious backlash. Indeed, many editors wouldn't even publish it. Even in the tabloids, you know, um, hand on heart, I can honestly say I have very, very rarely seen an article coming from a male journalist saying, why do women do this or women are doing this? Um, you know, basically a generic attack on women. It just doesn't happen. Now, there is anti-women sexism out there, of course there's misogyny out there, but I'm talking about what's deemed to be um, kind of professionally acceptable. So I, I'm not for a second saying that there isn't misogyny out there, there is. Um, women do have to put up with cat calls and harassment and other problems. In no way am I trivialising any of that problem, and it does need to be called out. But I'm talking about um, how how society's attitude is to this, because misandry, that is the hatred of men and boys, is barely even known as a concept. And this is not, in my opinion, because it doesn't exist. It's because misogyny um, has just got a lot more traction as a taboo um, because of the perception that women are victims uh, of the patriarchy. And this is the feminist message that's been going out for decades. Basically, women are kept down by the wicked patriarchy, and that's it. There's a, a victimhood industry, I would say, from feminist writers, uh, much like race baiters, and it's it's pretty tiresome, to be quite honest. Uh, I am not saying, by the way, that none of the issues are legitimate. I am saying that when you get someone who consistently puts out the same message, then I really do question the motivations. I question... Are they really trying to raise awareness of a problem? Or are they just furthering divisions? This can apply to other areas. Uh, and go see Fulani, the woman at the centre of that storm, over the where are you from comment. Apparently she has been invited to the palace, but she now says that she will only go if it's an opportunity to, to teach them. So she's not coming across well. She's coming across as quite... Um, I think quite entitled that like she is somehow qualified to to lecture people. I mean, one side of this is that people have pointed out an 83-year-old woman's life has been ruined and she'll be devastated by, you know, the, the vilification going against her. If Alani has made it clear that she didn't, and so has the Women's Equality Party, they've claimed that they didn't want her to be sacked. But clearly they've brought up the story. They've brought up the story. They knew it would have got attention. They must have known this would have put some focus and pressure on this woman. So I don't entirely buy that it's um, totally without some level of vindictiveness or, if that's too strong a word, um, some level of, uh, well, we need to expose her. Um, I think there is some of that in it. But getting back to the main issue of this video on anti-male sexism, uh, I'm not going to read out this whole article because it's, it's a bit long, but I'll put a link to it, as I always try to do. And it's from a freelance journalist in the Metro newspaper, um, Emmy Harrison-West. 
uh, basically the title is that this is opinion. Uh, so they always do that to make it clear it's the writer's own opinion. Um, but they're still giving you the platform. I'm no longer walk. Uh, I'm no longer moving out of the way of men who walk into me. Basically, the issue of this writer, the you know, the gist of it is that she feels that she's always being pushed to the side on pavements because men won't move. That's pretty much the gist of it. You know, again, there may be some truth in this. Maybe she has experienced that, but. The article is just absolutely drenched in the sense of victimhood. Um, poor me. You know, I've always been subservient, as women are in society. This is the sort of narrative that she's putting out. Um, I'm just going to quote a few parts of this. I'm going to put the whole article so people can judge for themselves, but um, this is a good example of the sort of narrative that feminist writers often come out with. Uh, I've regularly been barreled into by a dynamic duo of dudes who refuse to part from me being dangerously edged out onto the road or squeezed up against walls and fences with my arms and shoulders tucked in and bags against my chest. As a result, I learned to move out of the way quietly, timidly, and without fuss, be a good woman, putting that in brackets. So you can tell this is someone who very much thinks that she's a victim of the patriarch. Um, even when I've been walking hand in hand with my husband, I've been slammed into and my husband hasn't as if I wasn't there or worth moving out of the way for. A coincidence? No, it's sex. It's called man slamming, a phrase coined after 25 year old New Yorker Beth Breslau conducted an experiment in 2015. So, nothing sexist about that smear, about that insult. You know, you're man slamming, it's a bit like mansplaining. In other words, the guy has an opinion you don't like, you just accuse him of mansplaining. She noticed that men were much less likely than women to move out of the way when approaching a woman on the street. She tested this experience from a physically body slam by multiple men. Well, I haven't seen that experiment, but I would imagine it was something like, um, uh, you know, 10 hours walking in New York City as a woman, where you cherry pick sleaze bags and jerks and those sort of guys, and then paint it out like it's the whole picture. Now, if someone's walking in, I just mentioned this because I imagine it was very similar. You know, if you're walking in a major city, anywhere in the world, uh, New York City in this case, for 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever it was, you're going to go past thousands and thousands of people. Some of them are going to be jerks. Some of them are going to be unpleasant. But, you know, a feminist writer will cherry pick and, you know, she'll pick out the sleaze bags and say, this is, this is men. Uh, okay, just to continue. Um... Well, it's basically, it's just drenched with poor me and, you know, how terrible it is to be a woman. It's pretty much, um, yeah, here's a good example of her, her way of thinking. I feel like some men, okay, she's using some, but that isn't the overall tone of the article. I feel like some men have a sense of entitlement. The world is made for them and prescribes them privilege from birth. So why would they move out of the way for someone? Men are always deemed to be stronger. The breadwinners who bring home the bacon while women are maternal, caring and docile. The language used to describe us couldn't be more different. So is it any wonder we're treated differently in public? Um, thankfully, today, some men create space for me, space that we share. Yeah, perhaps the ones that you've shamed. Uh, sometimes we say, excuse me, as in politeness. Da, da, da. Basically, I'll put a link people could judge for themselves. I think pretty much everything she's talking about here, I've had actually women bump into me and not apologize on several occasions i've held the door open for women in a shopping center and you know they don't bother to say thank you rude people can be found across the board unfortunately and they are both male and female i've come across some very obnoxious rude men and i've come across some obnoxious rude women now, this feminist writer and i'm calling her that because I decided to check out some of her other social media to get an idea of where she was coming from, to be fair, before making this video. But not surprisingly, it's like her Twitter account is, I would say probably one in every three articles that she's posted is some sort of attack on men. You know, about how sleazy or sexist are being. Another post that she had was um, that she hasn't been to the gym for 10 years because of sexual harassment from men, and now she goes with her husband. Well, I mean, what, what sort of message does that send out? So 
she's asking her husband to go there to protect her. What what is that? Well, that sort of flies in the face of being a strong, independent woman. But regardless, um, so she had a bad experience ten years ago, and now she's sort of assuming that all men are potential sleaze bags. Well, I can understand a bad experience putting you off something, but it's this sort of generalizing attitude towards half the human race. Um, cherry picking bad experiences to somehow say that's the whole picture or that's a big part of the picture because you know this they're, they're savvy enough to not say oh it's all men so feminist writers will put, put in that little caveat at some point some men but then the overall tone of the article is very anti-male and it's this victimhood complex oh, we women are kept down Men have it all. Men have privileges from birth. Well, Ukrainian men might have something different to say about that when they're mandated to stay at home and die for their country in the thousands. Um, I'm, I've am i never made a secret of my, my irritation, if I can put it that way, uh, at the narrative coming out from Western feminists because... There are some legitimate issues that there is, but it is just this never-ending, never-ending um, routine of male shaming. You know, the very fact that she is using the sexist term, um, what was it? Uh, just get back to that. I'm scrolling down the article. It's called, uh, let's see. Just scrolling down the article because it has photographs and stuff as well. She's got a picture there with her husband, so I guess it's oh look, I don't I'm not against all men. I'm married. Um I'm just trying to where are we? Yeah, it's called man slamming. Okay, imagine a male writer writes uh, it's called woman splaining or it's called woman slamming. Um now feminists might contend, oh, but women don't do this. Well, women do other things that uh, maybe more, more so than men. But if there was a word invented to describe them, then it would immediately be denounced as misogynist. The writer would be absolutely, you know, he would probably lose his job. Um, so when we talk about double standards and sexism, uh, really feminists could, well, they won't, they won't introspect. They never do that. But it's, it's just this nauseating, never-ending victimhood narrative. It's it's a really it's a really unattractive quality in anyone actually, men or women, this sense of kind of self pity and um I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. I'm a victim because I'm a woman, I'm a victim because I'm black, I'm a victim because I'm whatever, you know. And the reason I don't like getting into the battle of the sex as much is because I feel that it is important for us men not to get too defensive. And not, you know, sort of get into this in reverse and say we are victims because we're men. I don't believe that. That's why I don't fully endorse the men's rights movement, because I think sometimes they get into the same worldview as feminists do. So feminists think men are the enemy and men are the problem. Some MRAs, frankly, act the same way with women. They act like all women are the problem and they act like um, women are generally against them. That's not true. Um, but fundamentally, I think third wave Western feminists are divisive. And I think that they have quite a dishonest narrative. They, what they will do is they will cite legitimate issues, you know, things that they have experienced, but they will take those and try to present it as the whole and try and make out that the average bloke behaves that way. Now, if I'm walking down the street and let's say there's traffic coming, I'm not going to force a woman to go out into the road. I wouldn't force anyone to go out in the road. You know, probably a wait for the car or whatever to pass. And then um, depending on what sort of street it was, you know, you just judge the situation. But this idea that she's putting out that the average bloke would just allow a woman to dangerously go out into the road and potentially get knocked down. I think that's complete fantasy. Um, in fact, often a man will see it as a romantic gesture to let the woman walk on the inside precisely to protect her from oncoming traffic. Um, but you know you can't win with feminists because if you do that, then that's you know patronizing her, and it's because this is the fundamental problem I have with Western feminist thinking. You simply cannot win with it, no matter what a man does, he's blamed. If he is openly rude as in the way she's describing, then you know he's misogynist and he's he's dominating the space. 
if he's a gentleman and actually shows politeness, then oh, he's patronizing her because she's a woman. It's like um, some women, and again, I emphasize some, if a bloke offers to help them with heavy bags, say on a train or other form of public transport, to say, I'm a strong, independent woman, I can do that myself. You know, it's just because I'm a woman. Or maybe he's just trying to be a decent bloke and offer to help. Um, this is not every woman. Not every woman has a sort of victimhood, defensive mindset. A decent woman, a decent person, would just say, thank you. I appreciate the help. I mean, the same could apply to an older gentleman. You know, if I saw, uh, say, an 80-year-old man struggling, I would offer to help him. Absolutely. I helped two young women on a train in China that had heavy bags. And, you know, if you've ever been on those long-distance trains, they're, they're quite comfortable, actually. But they've got, you know, they're long journeys, up to 10 hours. Uh, so people tend to sleep and, you know, they relax. But uh, these young women had heavy bags. And basically, yeah, I, I could see they were struggling. I offered to help. There was a bit of a language barrier, but, you know, body language. I lifted the bags up and they they thanked me. Um, she she uh, nodded, they smiled. So I'm thinking, yeah, they're classy. They're classy women. They they have gratitude. That's you know, I'm trying to do a decent thing. I wasn't flirting with them. I wasn't trying to pick up a girlfriend. I'm just doing the decent thing. Um, you know, I'm a strong young guy. So there it is. I'm not going to just sit there and watch people struggle. Now, if they had been, um, you know, a pair of old men, I would have helped them as well. It's it's just this thing about um, being a decent human being. So I really have a problem with articles like that. There's just this generic attack on half the human race. And it, it doesn't really matter that she's put a little caveat at the bottom saying, I feel like some men. Oh, the, she's put some in there. That's not the tone of the article. It's really not. And just seriously, these Western feminists who have a victimhood mindset, it's like, I get it. Some guys are jerks. Some guys are sleazy. Some guys are rude. But you can't cherry pick bad experiences and then make it out like that's a whole, it's a much bigger problem than it actually is. You know, I do not see women being constantly pushed out of the way as she is describing. I've got eyes. Yeah, I'm not a woman, but I've got eyes. And it doesn't happen that much. You know, most people will, will move out of the way. Um, or they, even even if the you know it is true that men will move out of the way less. That even if that's technically true, you know the the picture that she's presenting is a situation where uh, poor defenseless women are shoved to the side. I think that's actually quite inflammatory, and I think it's uh, she's a freelancer. But I think that's you know I'm a freelance journalist, or um, I've trained as that at least. If I was to write an article. Attacking women that, in that sort of way, um, I'd be bombarded with messages calling me a misogynist. I might get a few blokes supporting me, but I'd be called a misogynist. And frankly, if I was generically attacking women, then you know that's what it would be. Um, but all the time, it, pretty much every single day, you will see an article that is like this every single day, and it is just so. The Metro often publishes them. There's a few other newspapers that do, but it's pretty much guaranteed. At least one newspaper will have at least one article every day. It's this sort of generic attack on men. Now, that is not the same as saying I think men are victims. I'm saying that feminist writers get away with much more than male writers would get away with if they were talking about women. I absolutely contend that. Um, and that's, you know... Just one example. There are many, many examples of this. Too many to, to list in one video. But I'll put a link to that. Uh, you know, maybe some people will agree with her. Maybe they'll say, well, she's just raising this issue. Um, if it was a one-off, I could maybe, maybe accept that point. I've looked at her track record. Like, every third article she comes out with is about, you know, men, basically. And uh, how, how hard it is to be a woman and... It's just the usual script, and it's frankly pretty, pretty tiresome. Um, and it, it's all the time. You see this all the time. That's why I'm saying everyday misandry, because women writers get away with this stuff all the time in a way that male writers would not get away with. That's just fact. It's just male writers would not get away with this. The only way a man could write something like that is in some, you know, the dark corners of the internet, 
which I don't recommend. But, you know, people say there's a growth of these misogynistic um, sites or whatever. And I do think that's concerning. But maybe it's because some of these guys think, well, we can't have an open debate and an honest debate because there's double standards on this. Now, I don't condone misogyny at all. But I'm saying, why does misandry get a free pass? I'm frankly sick of it. Let me know your thoughts.